Today's mini lecture is going to be on chapters two and three of Design for Electrical and Computer Engineers, and it's going to be about problem definition and requirement specification. Before we get into this, let's provide a little bit of context that we can use to frame the discussion. Meep, meep. So I think we all know how this video is going to end. We've, we've seen enough examples of this uh, that, that we know uh, or have a pretty good idea what's going to happen uh, so we don't need to finish it. <clears throat> I think we all have a pretty good idea of how this video is going to end. But what does this really tell us about engineering design and defining problems and specifying requirements for an engineering design project. Um, really, there are two questions you need to ask yourself in a global sense when you're doing engineering design. Um, and those two questions are, is the problem important? And is the problem solvable? And in both these cases, um, you need to think, first of all, is the problem solvable by you? And is the problem important to you? You also need to be thinking about, is the problem important to the world? And I'm using the world to be other people beside yourself. And is the problem solvable by the world? Because certainly, unless the problem's important to you and you can solve the problem, you should not be taking it on. Uh, because if it's not important to you, you're not going to put your best effort. And if you can't solve it, uh, maybe somebody else should be working on the problem. If the problem's not important to the world, it doesn't mean you shouldn't solve it, but likely you won't get paid or rewarded for doing this. And if you're choosing something like anti-gravity, which currently is not a solvable problem by anybody in the known world, um, you, your chances of success go down significantly. So these are questions you need to ask yourself. And this really gets to the core of what the chapters on problem definition and requirement specification are talking about. Um, Another way to phrase problem definition and requirement specification is to try to identify what the real problem is. Ask yourself, what is the real problem? Because in many cases, uh, you're given a problem, and when somebody gives you a problem, they also tell you what they think the solution is. And identifying problems is hard. It's probably the, the hardest part of engineering, much harder than solving them, in my opinion. And so one needs to back off and think, what's the real problem? For example, catching the roadrunner may not be Coyote's real problem. Um, getting food, there may be other ways to go about doing this, and perhaps his method of solution is really not ideal. 